Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So, uh, I've got some exciting news. Um, we reached 7,000 subscribers on this channel, so that's just brilliant really, and thank you very much for subbing. In celebration of reaching 7,000 subscribers, I've decided to upload a mathematics competition containing unusually difficult questions, I'll say. That's what I'll say, Un unusually difficult questions. The first person to decipher a hidden message by answering 10 riddles within seven days of the upload is gonna win $100. So that should be pretty good fun that's coming up shortly and keep your eye on this channel alrighty but on to the topic for today so today's topic is the min and max instructions in SSE sorry something stuck to my head it's been a really long time since I did a video video just dedicated to instructions in x86 and I think we pretty much only covered about half of them maybe this video today is going to be a bit of a return to form uh, the min and max instructions in uh, SIMD you can think of these a bit like a, a conditional move. Yeah, they're sort of like a compare and then a move. What they do is um, compare corresponding elements from two registers in uh, SIMD, so that's MMX registers or the SSE registers or, or AVX if you've got it. Uh, they compare corresponding elements and store either the minimum of each pair or the maximum of each pair. Um, the first ones that we'll look at, we'll only look at these briefly too, the uh, SSE floating point versions. Um, max SS, Max PS, Max SD, Max PD, and then minimum versions of the same thing. So these are for discovering the minimum and the maximum of each pair of either singles or doubles. Um, so what you'll find, I think, if you look at these instructions up, is that these single versions were included with SSE 1, and I think the double versions come about in SSE 2. Um, the parameters for these operations, I think for all of the instructions we're looking at today, the parameters are an SSC register is the first source and the destination, and the second source is either an SSC register or memory. Yeah, so you can use MEM64 if you're using SD, um, or MEM32 if you're using Scalar Single. And of course, min SS and max SD, that's a minimum of scalar singles and max of scalar doubles. Um, you've got two SSE registers as your parameter, or the second parameter can be a 128-bit memory operand. All right, that's good, but what do they do? Well, uh, this is a bit of an illustration down here. So if, if the CPU reads the instruction min PS, XMMO, XMM1, imagining that these numbers just here are in XMMO, and these numbers are in XMM1, what the CPU is going to do is compare each pair. So it's going to compare 12.3 to 5.9, and because it's min PS, minimum of packed singles, uh, it's going to record the smallest of the two. So that's 5.9. Yeah, it's going to record that in the first operand. Yeah, so this first operand here is a source operand. Uh, it's also the destination. Anyway, it's pretty simple, really. So each pair of... Uh, each pair of singles is going to get compared and you just end up with the minimum of each pair in the result. Uh, max PD, so this is uh, looking for the maximum of packed doubles. This is just as easy really. So instead of the uh, registers being read as four packed singles, you can obviously read SSE registers as packed doubles, two packed doubles. And uh, this is what this instruction is going to do. So it's going to compare 17.9 and 1.2. Uh, it's going to find the maximum because it's max PD and it's going to store that maximum in the result, XMMO. Yeah, I hope that makes a bit of sense. It's pretty simple, really, what they do. Uh, but moving along, um, we're getting closer to having a bit of a demonstration. We'll do a demo at the end. If you want to compare integers instead of floating point, um, there's more integer data types than there are floating points. So we've got bytes, words, D words, Q words. There's more of these instructions than there are for the uh, floating point. Um, you've also got signed and unsigned. So originally, um, we only had four instructions. So P min SW, P max SW, P min UB, and P max UB. Um, that's packed min of signed words, uh, packed max of signed words, P minimum or packed minimum of unsigned bytes, and packed maximum of unsigned bytes. These were originally included in MMX. Yeah, so these instructions, and only these four uh, that we're looking at today, only these four will work with uh, MMX registers too, which is quite cool if you want to do 64-bit um, SIMD. Um, later on, they were extended to include 128-bit um, operands, so that's in uh, SSE2. Yeah, so you can use MMX 
or SSC registers with these particular instructions. Um, and rather cool, uh, in SSC 4.1, so this is about eight years later, uh, we finally got the rest of the integer min and max instructions. So this is SSC 4.1, 12 more instructions. Oh, I don't think 12, 12 more instructions, but there's 12 instructions all up, 12 integer comparison instructions. The mnemonic is something like this. So first of all, you put P for packed, then you can choose min or max depending on what you're looking for then you choose s or u which means signed or unsigned and then you put your data type so b for byte d for d word and w for word 16-bit words um, for example if you're looking for the minimum of signed bytes you would use p min s b yeah um, or just another example if you're looking for the maximum of unsigned d words then your mnemonic would be p max u d yeah Okay, a few little notes before a little example of how these um, things all go together. If you want your program to run on as many CPUs as possible, then if you're comparing integers, you want to only use SW and UB versions of the integer instructions. That's signed words and unsigned bytes, because those were the original ones that were included with uh, SSE 1. Um, SSE 4.1 instructions weren't included on AMD CPUs until October 2011. Yeah, so if you use if you use those newer integer comparison instructions, then your program won't run on uh, older AMD CPUs. Mind you, that's still four years ago, so it'll run on most AMD CPUs. I think from the bulldozer on, uh, AMD CPUs included SSC 4.1. Uh, the S, what's this? The S, W, and S, B instructions also work with MMX registers. Yeah, we said that already. So what you do want to be careful of is that the newer um, instruction mnemonics like p min sd um, packed minimum of signed d words that won't work with uh, mmx instructions yeah so p min sd mmo mm1 that's not an instruction yeah if you're using the newer uh, what's they going to be eight uh, integer comparisons you've got to use ssc registers and what's this? There are AVX versions of these instructions also. Yeah, if you happen to have a, a, a more modern CPU, then um, you might want to take advantage of the three operand AVX versions of these instructions. So the mnemonics for the AVX versions, you have to put a V at the start for who knows what reason you just do. You've got to put a V at the start uh, and you've got three operands. So the first operand is uh, at an SSC register and that's the destination. And the second and third operands are the sources. Yeah, so these non-destructive um, comparisons are very, very cool. Um, the second, yep, yeah, I said that. Okay, so let's run through a bit of an example. So what we want to do is um, have a bit of a go at seeing where this might help us speed up some code. So let's say that we've got a function to find the smallest uh, signed byte in a group of 32. So this function takes a character array, that's uh, a signed byte array, and we know that there's 32 bytes in there. Yeah, it's just hard programmed. Um, one natural method for finding the smallest byte in this array would be just typing out the C++ code just here. And C++ compilers aren't stupid. Well, that's debatable. Uh, they know about min sb. Yeah, this is really, really weird, actually. We'll probably have a look at this at the end. So on my machine, um, when I run this code here with um, optimizations and everything turned on, um, I can check the disassembly and C++ uses min sb five times, but for some reason uh, this code runs really, really slow, as we'll see. Uh, I don't know what it's using min sb for, but it's not doing it very intelligently. Anyway, we can have a look at that at the end. So that's a C++ version, which uh, we're going to be racing shortly. In the assembly version, uh, that we're going to go through in some detail, what we can do is uh, use p min sb to compare 16 pairs of bytes at once. So if we compare the first 16 bytes of that you know, original list of 32 with the final 16 bytes, and we save the minimum of each pair, then we know that the minimum of the original 32 bytes must be one of the 16 bytes. Uh, it's it sounds more confusing than it is. We'll have a bit of a look in just a second at how it all works, but something like a, a comparison network, I think, is what we're setting up. Uh, similar to a sorting network, there's um, algorithms called sorting networks which um, compare things very cleverly. So in the end, this is a, a log 
base 2 of uh, n time algorithm because we actually have SIMD instructions which operate on all 32 bytes in parallel. That's nice. Um, all right, the first step, the first thing that we want to do in uh, assembly is read our data. So we just got a standard C function. We're going to get past that um, pointer to the array of characters in uh, RCX. So we want to read that into a register. Now yeah, I've chosen XMMO and XMM1. Yeah, so notice those two 128-bit registers can fit all 32 bytes. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, something that you might want to note is uh, I've used movdqa. Yeah, I think the new operator nowadays seems to always align things to 16 bytes, which is pretty good. But if you're not sure that your data will be aligned, uh, you might want to use movdqu. Yeah, mov double quad word unaligned. Anyway, this is um, just hypothetically what uh, XMMO and XMM1 might read from RAM. Nice little byte lists. Okay, after we read the data, we want to compare um, the 16 bytes in XMMO with the 16 bytes in XMM1. And we can do that with P min SB, packed minimum of signed bytes. Yeah, something like this. Uh, so all this instruction is going to do is compare each pair of bytes and store whichever is the smallest of each pair in XMMO. So 7 is the smallest out of 29 and 7, uh, 5 is the smallest out of 42 and 5, etc, etc. I'm sure you can see what's happening. Uh, but what's interesting, what's interesting about this is that the smallest of the original 32 bytes must be one of these 16. Yeah, that's important, that's important. Um, okay, so the next amazing trick is that we've got to copy the um, top eight bytes from XMMO into XMM1. So those 16 bytes there in XMMO, um, those were the 16 results from the comparisons. We want to copy eight of those into XMM1. Um, we can do that in a number of ways. I chose P shuff D. Um, you might want to read up on how that works. I notice that the compiler seems to use PSRLDQ, which is packed shift right logical double quad words, which is a pretty good instruction, but it does mean that you need a MOV DQA in there as well. So I, I don't know why it does this, but um, I've gone with P shuff D because it kind of performs the MOV and the shuffle at the same time. Yeah, it's just a bit quicker. What's this? The top bits of XMM1 will be whatever they were before. Yeah, we're not clearing the top bits of XMM1. Yeah, but it's no longer relevant, so I'll just start filling it out with uh, question marks. Yeah, we don't care what's there anymore. All, all that we care about now is the low 8 bytes of uh, XMMO and XMM1. Alright, but once we've performed that little shuffle there, we've got another 8 pairs of bytes to compare. So we can compare XMMO with XMM1 using P, min, SB again. Um, you'll notice that we just alternate here between P, min, SB and um, these shuffling or moving instructions. Yeah, to set up another few pairs to compare. Uh, but P min SB, this time we'll end up with, um, what, eight? Eight bytes? Yeah, eight bytes in uh, XMMO, and we know that our smallest byte, the smallest byte from the original 32, must be one of these eight. Good stuff. Uh, and once again, we've got a shuffle, so this time we don't have to shuffle uh, eight bytes, but uh, just four. Yeah, so we just keep splitting the bytes that we're shuffling in half. Uh, P shuff D I used once again um, to move the negative 89, negative 61, 8 and 14 to the low D word of uh, XMM1. And after we've done that, we can perform another P min SB. So you see, we just keep halving the number of comparisons that we have to perform each time with P min SB. And once again, all of these top question marks just here, there is data there. Yeah, the instruction P min SB is still finding minimums, but we don't care. Uh, it's not relevant. We know that our lowest byte of the original 32 is one of these four. Negative 89, negative 61, 3 and 6. Uh, and now we've got a copying instruction once again, but this time um, we've got to use a word copying instruction. So we're down smaller than uh, a D word, so we can't use P shuff D anymore. Um, so I've gone with P shuff LW, packed shuffle of low words. Um, yeah, just have a look at the um, programmers' manuals from Intel and or AMD if you want to know how this instruction works. Uh, it's going to copy the 3 and 6 to the low word of XMM1. Yeah, XMMO's got negative 89 and negative 61. And once again, after our shuffle, we perform another comparison. 
Um, this time we're really getting down to the you know the crux of the uh, of the whole problem. The smallest byte of the original 32 is either negative 89 or negative 61. We know no matter what 32 bytes we started with, um, the smallest is going to be now stored in the low word of XMMO, which is pretty cool really because we've only done four copies of P min SB and a few shuffles. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting to note. Uh, I might be using the word interesting wrong, but the negative 61 just here happens to be our second smallest value. Now, if you go back and look at the original list, it happens to be the second smallest value, but that won't always be the case. Yeah, that won't always be the case. Often it will, and in this case it is, but it doesn't have to be the case. Uh, negative 89 happens to be exactly the smallest, and that will always be the case. Um, the smallest will always be one of them. Um, all right, so now we've got our final uh, shuffle instruction or our final moving instruction. Uh, MOV DQA XMMO XMM no XMM1 XMMO uh, packed shift right logical DQ. So this final shuffle just here, I did use the shift right logical double quad words because um, we want to shift a byte and the shuffle byte instruction um, requires another register set up with uh, indices yeah, and I didn't want to do that because it seemed like a waste of time. That would be two or three instructions maybe so I went with um, yeah, just a mov and a packed shift left DQ. Um, it's a bit weird but the second parameter of packed shift right, did I just say packed shift left? Uh, packed shift right logical DQ is um, it's read as bytes. Yeah, so if you shift one just here using this instruction, it's not one bit, it's uh, it's eight bits, one byte in other words. Yeah, don't get confused. I'm, I'm constantly forgetting that myself but yeah, it's in bytes. Anyway, after we've done that uh, final shift, we can perform the final P min SB. Yeah, P min SB, XMMO, XMM1. This is the fifth uh, P min SB. And what we'll end up with is negative uh, 89, the smallest value from the original 32 in the lowest byte of XMMO. Very cool. So to return that, you want to put it in uh, AL. And uh, that's what I've done just here using MOV D EAX XMMO. So that's just going to copy, well, the whole D word really of XMMO to EAX, but. Um, the prototype of the function specifies char, so C++ is going to understand that it's um, just AL that it's looking at. Okay, that's good. That's good. So what does it do? Well, let's just uh, come over here to uh, a bit of C++. So this is my uh, little testing program just here, and there's something really weird that I want to show you um, in just a moment. So this is the C++ function with just a loop of 32, uh, just like I, I, I said at the start. Um, we set up a bunch of random numbers uh, using rand as always, faithful rand, I love that rand function. Um, and then I run through I think 100 million is it? Yeah, 100 million times um, we run this function just here, this C++ function and time it each time to see how long it takes. So I actually do five iterations of that. And after we've done C++ it's got uh, pretty much exactly the same thing, but the assembly version. Yeah, so we call the assembly function and time that and see if it's any quicker. Um, let's come over here to assembly and see what it looks like. So this is all of the code that we just went through in the slides. Now, I might have made a mistake or five in the slides, so if you want to see the code, you know, without typos or whatever, this would probably be the place to look for it. Uh, it's pretty much exactly what we went through in the slides, yeah, step by step with a few comments. All good. So how does she go? Let's have a look. Uh, it's 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 much faster. The assembly version is much faster, which is quite nice. So there you go. The C plus plus one is taking a little bit over two seconds per iteration. Yeah, and the assembly version is taking a little bit over a fifth of a second. So it's it's much much faster. It's very, very nice that they both agree that the minimum of the 32 bytes was negative 124. That's very good. Notice that these are not the same bytes that I used in the slides. Um, and it's also very good that the sums agree. So these sums down here were just so that I could check my code. Yeah, just to make sure that C++ and assembly are summing up or, or, or getting the same values uh, each time. All right, so we've got almost a 10 times speed up. Um, I think the C++ is, well let's just do a bit of a divide and see what happens, 2, 1, 1, 1, divided by 2, 2, 5. 
Uh, 9.38 times speed up, which is pretty healthy. But what's weird, what's really, really weird, and it's quite, you know, got me completely baffled, is uh, if we pause here on the C++ version, and we open up our dis assembly, uh, disassembly window, I'll just show you how to do that in case you don't, in case you don't know, uh, windows, or debug, sorry, windows and disassembly. Um, okay, so we're going to step into this fine smallness just here. I hope my screen recorder doesn't freak out. No, it's all good. Um, okay, so this is the disassembly of the compiler's uh, find smallest CPP. And what's weird is if you look at this code, uh, you see right there, look at that, P min SB. And then mov DQA, packed shift right logical DQ. So they're doing pretty much... Um, the same algorithm that we just went through in the slides, uh, the assembly version of it, except they're using uh, mov dqa and the packed shift right logical double q words, uh, which I avoided uh, for most of it except for the last step. So the weird thing is that it's using those 5p mins, but the time it's getting is just terrible. Um, I don't know if it's something to do with my CPU or, or why it's so slow. Um, if we just keep stepping through, what you'll notice is that even though it does those 5p min SBs, for some reason, uh, the CPU goes into a loop just here. Yeah, I mean, I haven't looked at this loop just here, but I can't understand why, if it's doing um, 5p min SBs, um, why it doesn't have the, the minimum already. Like, what's this loop for? Who knows? Anyway, I want you to have a really good day, and uh, I reckon you're all brilliant. Cheers. See ya.